hello uh, today we're gonna create a chat app which is uh not the difficultest thing ever but there you go so we just connected here and it's gonna say a user has connected you can type things in the chat like hello my name is jeff um and if we are in say perhaps we go to a different room and then we type things in then we don't receive it only 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 if they're in the same room do they ever have to do with each other so so it is uh, pretty cool so yeah let's get right into it um i've got a uh just a uh, 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 uh empty directory made for it and let's just get started firstly uh you need to have no jams but i'm guessing you already have a lot of prerequisites if you're here you're trying to make stuff like this but um, or not a lot. You just need for this uh, for this tutorial. You only need Node.js, which you can download on Node.js.org. Um, so to do that, we're going to say npm init y to init our project uh, with just default settings. Then what we're going to do is we're going to install Express Socket.io, uh, UUID, and EJS. And all of these are going to make sense once we use them. And, uh, no thanks. Uh, one more thing we might want to do is save dev. And this is going to be NodeMod. And we're going to let this download, clear out. And we're going to do code period to open it with Visual Studio Code. And there you go. Um, so I'm going to go to my, I'm going to create a server.js file. And then we're gonna go to our package JSON, and then we're gonna set test. We're gonna set this to uh, npm, or uh, sorry, nodemon server.js, and we're gonna create a te uh, uh, We're gonna create a start, and this is going to be uh, node server.js. Okay. Um. So yeah, we're gonna start here in our command prompt. We're gonna do npm test. And it's going to start up our node server uh, as a developer. Um, and let's get started. We're going to firstly require express, uh, which you can do like this. You, you have new ES6 syntax, but I just prefer this. But you do. Uh, then we're going to require app, which is just going to be the function of express. Then we're going to require um, serve. We're going to create a variable called server, which is going to be require http dot server and then with our app and last but not least well we're we're going to require io so we're going to require socket dot io on our server which is pretty cool now we're going to say server dot listen on port 8080 and we got our server up and running um if we go there and we go to our server and we go to localhost 8080. You won't see anything because we're not getting anything. We're not pushing anything. So, yeah. So, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to say app.get. And then slash. And we're going to take in a request. And a response. And for the response, we're going to just... Um, because if you're here, you at the slash, you're on the root directory of the project so that means you're localhost 8080 and not with anything past the slash just localhost 8080 so then we want to assign you to a brand new room uh, so to do that we're just going to be using UUID so let's define UUID so we're gonna say UUID uh, go to npmjs and we're in search of UUID um, this is what we're going to be using and they're uh, grabbing it by saying import v4 as UUID from UUID or in our case, we're going to be using the old common JS syntax um, and doing it like this. So I'm just going to paste it in there because I'm extremely lazy. Oh, well, hold on. we'll just type it in. Normally, we're going to say v4 uh, equals GUID v4. Uh, and we're going to require that from our UUID package like this. Um, and then we're going to redirect a response. So you're, you want to get data from us, uh, from the slash from a redirecting. And we're going to respond by redirecting you 
to a brand new room, which is going to be uh, like this. Uh, and then slash uh, UID by DV4. And this is going to be a function. Um, so now, if we do this, we've uh, every time we now go to locals 8080, it's going to redirect us to a brand new room. But there's a couple of problems with this. Firstly, um, we want to render a room. Um, for each room, we want to render a room. And secondly, uh, well, uh, yeah, what are we going to give it? And how, we're gonna, how are we going to get the data over? So, let's get started. We're going to do app.get. And this is going to be slash dot slash room. This can be anything, but as long as you p don't forget to put this semicolon in front of it, because that's very important. And then we're going to grab ourselves a request and a response like this. And um, so this uh, colon uh, room means everything that's after the slash. So in our case, this is our room ID right now. This is our room we're in. That's what that means. Um, so yeah. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to say response.render. Uh, and we want to render a room. Uh, and we might want to give it some variables to work with that we can grab. And we're going to be using EJS. So that's what the render function only works with EJS and stuff like that. So we're going to say a room ID is going to be equaling to response.parameters. Uh, dot room and this is just the same as we got right here okay great um <laughs> great um so now what we're gonna do is gonna create a views folder and we're gonna be working that with a second and with that in a second but if we do this like hmm, no default engine was specified so we can't render anything if there's no engine uh specified so we're gonna do that so we're gonna say app dot set and we're going to use our EJS, so we're going to set our view engine to EJS, like this. Uh, and now what we do is going like, there is no room in the views directory. So let's create that. So we get our views directory, and then we want to create a room. And now if we just do uh, uh, exclamation point and then tab or enter, it's going to create uh, a brand new just boilerplate stuff and say, like, test. And we can probably also console.log r. Because we're using EJS, we can use EJS syntaxing, which is uh, hella cool. Uh, so we can just be like room ID uh, 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 like this, I'm guessing. And then this is our room ID. And you're like, okay, but how do, why is it, how does this work? But the room ID is given, this is the room ID. It's just uh, give th given through the uh, servant server uh. so yeah but we want to make that a variable so let's do that real quick so we're going to create a script and then then we're going to require our room id to be uh that room id so yeah so this so uh <laughs> so this so yes yes i'm saying a lot but with very little uh meaning to it so yeah we're going to use our syntax like this but this isn't going to work why isn't it gonna w isn't it gonna work? Because we're gonna put it in between semicolons, and now um, if we now go here, um, or not. We don't need to put it between semicolons. Sorry, between uh, <laughs> apostrophes. And the, now if we specify a room ID, that's the same thing that here. Amazingly cool. Amazing. And I'm also gonna call this a uh, chat program right here. You can call it whatever you wish, but yeah. I'm going to quickly test if I'm recording. I am. Great. Um, so yeah, we're going to now require a couple of things. Firstly, we're going to be requiring skeleton. So skeleton CSS, uh, this responsive boilerplate code. Uh, it's amazing to look actually, and it's, um, it's just... Yeah, it's pretty clean. And that's why we're going to be using it for our project. It's like intro code. Code. Like list examples. More. Browser. So, yeah. So, this is what we're going to be using. I You want to grab your file. Uh, our skeleton file from the CSS. 
the skeleton. I'm going to be importing it with my file, which you can do right here by just saying, uh, let's clear this and then be like, explorer, period. Which is going to open up uh, explorer with the current directory. Then you can go into, uh, I'm going to create a public folder for this. And then we're going to import our skeleton. Great, now we can restart this, uh, or start this again, and then we can stop worrying about it, and it's gonna work. But now we got a public folder, but the public folder isn't referenced ever anywhere, so, well, uh, we can try to be like, go to skeleton.css, but it's not really there, so it's just gonna seem it's a room. So, to make that work, we're going to, or, uh, oh, and that's gonna be... So, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to host that as well. We're going to also uh, make a server host that. So, we're going to say, how about you use express.static, and this is going to be our public folder. Now, uh, if we refresh this, you should see, yes, now we're hosting this skeleton folder as well, so you can grab your skeleton code, and yeah. So, there you go. Now we can reference this uh, skeleton.css by just creating a new link and this is going to be skeleton slash skeleton dot skeleton dot css now press, press it, wow, uh, starting to become somewhat nice um, and then we're going to go here and going to create a style.css which is just going to be uh, for us to edit stuff in. So we're going to create a style.css. We're going to reference our style.css. And there you go. Not going to do anything right now, but trust me, it will. So we're going to get rid of this test and we're going to create a couple of things. Firstly, we're going to create a form um, with an input and a button. And we're going to, that's going to send in there. And there you go. Uh, we don't need that space after it. Refresh. There you go. Um, um, so, skeleton has this, uh, button, uh, styles, and one of them is button-primary. And if we do that, it's gonna make the button, uh, blue, which is super cool. Uh, if we press it, it's gonna put that question mark after the URL, which we don't really want, so we're gonna work on that later. But right now, we're going to try to move it around and make it look somewhat nice. So, what we're gonna do is gonna select the form. And we're going to say position equals fix. Now we're going to say bottom equals one rem. Left equals one rem. So this is going to put it one. Uh, it's going to put it evenly in the corner like this. Uh, or, or at least it, it, it should. <laughs> um, now we're going to define like the height of everything to be two rem. Which is going to put it more near the corner. And now let's work a little with the inputs and how this is going to be uh, divided. So I'm going to do display flex and then justify content, uh, justify content evenly. So space evenly. And there you go. Which should work, but it's not working right now uh, because we're not defining the width uh, correctly. Okay. So yeah, now you can see that it is taking up the width, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, so now what we're going to do is going to say input, or the form input, and we're going to say the width of that's going to be 75%. And you should see, ta-da, we got this nice looking input field. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, also, there's one more thing that we need to create, and that's going to be our text box. And this is going to put where we are going to put all our text messages in once we receive them or once we type them in. So yeah, so now what we need is a script that's uh, Jav script.js. So we can do this and then script.js. And I don't want it in my views folder. I want to pu put it in my public folder. And then we're going to reference it. And we need to reference two things right here. We want to reference our socket.io. Which we can do like this, socket.io slash socket.io dot js. And this only works because we're creating a separate socket server. Uh, in their server.js, it only works because we're using this 
extra server that we're creating, which is super cool. Um, now we're gonna create a script that's a script with a source. Um, it's gonna be slash script dot js. There you go. And now what we can do is we can do start working on our JavaScript code. Firstly, we want to define our forms, which we can do like this: form equals document dot query selector, and that's gonna be our uh, form. And then we want to select our inputs, which you can also do with the query selector. And last but not least, we want to select our text box, which we can do uh, uh, by using in the uh, ID. So just uh, get element by ID, and that's going to be text box. And there you go. Now we can say form dot add event listener, and that's going to be submit. So every time the form has been submitted, we're going to uh, make a function with that event. And we're gonna say e dot prevent default. So don't go to that question mark after the website. If I say hello, I'm probably in a refresh. Hello, it's not gonna. It's not really gonna do anything because we're preventing its normal default. But we're not gonna get that weird question mark after the website. So what we're gonna do now is say if uh, input dot value. So if there's something in the input that we can. If there's any input value, not that if we do enter and there's nothing in the input because we don't want it to do anything there. Um, what we want to do is we want to say, hey, create a new element, push that onto the screen, and uh, call it a day. Um, so we're going to say const element equals a new document that create, create element. And that's going to be a P like this and they're gonna say const and then we're gonna say uh element dot inner html and then we're gonna set that to the input dot value and then what we want to do is we want to push that onto our text box so to do that we can say text box dot append our elements now that kind of pushes it to the screen and now if you say like hello you can say hello up here we're gonna work a little on that but it, it's getting there. Firstly, we need to clear this out. To do that, we can just empty it into a new, make it a new string. And now, if we say hello, it's gonna empty out the ch uh, text box or the input box. Second thing we want to do is firstly clean this up, maybe move this more to the right, but also specify if it's uh, sent by you or by someone else. So to do that, we can just uh, turn this into uh, put this in between. Uh, tildes or not tildes, those left facing uh, uh, apostrophes, something like that. And then we can do this slash, so arrow f b, then we can use the HTML syntax to bold things up, which you can do like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do dollar sign and then this in between, uh, some eh, in between. Why not everything not everything in a semicolon curly braces to define that this is a variable and should be printed out as input value. Now if you say hello, it's gonna say you and then hello. And then what we wanna do is we wanna move the um, whole text box uh, a little to the left. So that's gonna be margin left and like six and a half percent. Now we say hello. We'll see. Ta-da! We got it saying hello. It's above it. It's super cool. Super nice. Let's uh, work further on it. And like, why is it going percent? Well, firstly, this takes up uh, 75. Then uh, this is roughly 12. Uh, like, this is roughly 12 and a half. And this is 12 and a half to get the this together is roughly 25. And then this is 12 and a half. And then this is 6 and a half. Something like that. <laughs> It's just uh, I guessed a little and it and, and it seemed right. Um, so there you go. Um, but you're not receiving text messages from anybody else, is it? So we want to make that uh, happen. So when we we send the message, we also want to send something with sockets, but we don't have any socket connections. Uh, created and the server's not really listening for socket connections. So let's make that happen. So we're gonna say const socket 
uh, equals IO. And now if you go to the server, and uh, we can say socket or IO.on connection. Uh, so on a connection like this, we want to do some kind of callback, which is going to be a uh, socket. It's going to be an unnamed function. And then we can like console.log. Uh, a user has connected. And then um, with the socket that ID. And there you go. Now, if you refresh this, you'll see in the console that a user is connected. If we refresh this again, you'll see to that an, a different user is connected, which is actually the same, but uh, it sees it as something different. Uh, which is pretty cool. But that lets us now we can now at our socket we can send stuff. We aren't connected to any room yet, but let's say we just want to send stuff globally and not over different rooms just yet. So we're going to say. So we're going to say socket, uh, do, do, socket dot emit a message, uh, and what do we want the message to be? The input dot value. And now what we can do is we can in our socket code we can receive that message, and we can console dot log it, which is super cool. Now if I refresh this and we look at the console and I say like hello. You'll see in the console it's gonna say hello right here, and I can say like uh, cheese, <laughs> and it's gonna say it says cheese. Yeah, it says cheese. There you go, cheese. Um, which is pretty cool. Now we want to send. Virtually, we d we don't want it only to say cheese. We want to uh, make sure it sends it to the other clients that may be online at the same time. So we're gonna r make that receive that message, put in the variable message, and create an unnamed function. Um, for some people that don't know the brand new arrow syntax, or it's not the brand new, it's already a little, <laughs> it's a little, it's, it's almost like doing this, and I'm not sure if VS, is VS Code not going to correct me in any sense, it's going to, sure, but it's like doing this, or, uh, like doing this, uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Now we can say, like, uh, socket dot broadcast dot emit under the namespace message the message and what does this mean well it's, it's uh socket or broadcast is a um is, is is a condition it's like send it to everybody but the socket itself that's what socket or broadcast means and then emitting is just well what it means it's emitting it to all the clients and now uh, we're not gonna res we're not listening to it as clients but we can do that right now we can say like socket dot uh, on a message um, we can receive that message and we can actually virtually do the same thing as we are doing right here uh, with appending it to our text box, but just a little differently. So it's not going to be input dot value, but it's going to be our message that we are going to input into there. Um, and it's not going to be you here, but it's going to be like, uh, let's say like guest, and we're appending it. And that's actually <laughs> roughly it for all the uh, changing and stuff like that. If we now go uh, to localhost 8080 and we say hello here, it's not working. Oh, it is say hello here and can say hello here and it's receiving back and forth super cool we're not really working with rooms yet so let's get that started um uh so to do that we're going to uh when the window is loaded we want to we want to um uh, when the window is loaded and we want to join to the socket so we're gonna say uh, we're gonna want to join to the IO server uh, in some sense. So we're gonna say socket dot join and then the namespace join or this no this is socket dot join here it's socket dot emit join and then we want to uh, what do we want to emit with it? We want to emit the room ID. Oh my god, my uh, we want to emit the room ID with it. Um, which is not gonna be this. It's gonna be like this. There you go. We want to emit the room ID uh, when we're, and then we want to link our socket to that room ID. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say socket dot on join, and then we're gonna say uh, we want to grab the room ID, and then we want to say socket dot join uh the with that room ID, and there you go. And now if we set, instead of saying socket dot broadcast dot email, we can say we need to broadcast it to uh, the room, which we can do by uh, every time we send the input value. We also only not only want to send the input value, but we also want to send the room ID where we're in right now. So we do that by saying content dot input dot value and uh, room ID equals room ID. So we're sending both. And if we go to our server and we go to message, we get what we want to do two things. We want to say well, we want to send the message as content to the other people uh, that may be online, and then we want to broadcast it to everybody in the same room. So message dot room ID. Okay, cool. Now if you do this and we refresh and I say here hello, it's not gonna receive it here. But if we're both on the same URL and I say here hello, and I say here hello then suddenly our whole room idea works it's super cool uh there are one is there is one more feature that i want to implement and that is um uh to see if a user is connected which should be pretty simple uh so when a user has joined uh we're going to quickly do this we're gonna create this nice little arrow syntaxes which is super cool uh, like this socket dot join uh like this but we also want to say socket dot broadcast dot to the um uh, to the same people in the same room and we want to then broadcast dot emit under the name join and then we don't really need to send anything so we can send no or undefined i'm going to make it undefined and then we're going to say uh socket dot on uh, join, uh, and this is going to be an, uh, an arrow, just an unnamed function like this, um, and we're going to use this right here, <laughs> it's the same thing, we're, we're using a lot of code, we're being efficient, and then we're just going to say, under I, like this, a user has connected, uh, and then ending the I like this, and then we're appending it, and let's quickly look if that works. Refresh this, refresh this, and it's gonna say a user has connected. And inversely, this is a working chat app. Super cool. Super cool. Fully working. But if you would like to, uh, so I can give you, uh, you can do some own things that you might might be cool to put it in your own chat app it's like name system how are we going to going to define names uh so like now that's, that's not guess but it's gonna be like uh jeff said something or bob or something like that um you might want to add like em uh emoji support but you can technically do so like hello and then laughing cry emoji like this and technically you can set emojis but yeah maybe you want to find your own way to add a little windows to the right or maybe different syntaxing something like there's squared maybe perhaps that so you say like this and then that the emoji um so maybe you can do something like that um so yeah perhaps see what you wish to do uh names possibility possibilities are endless you could add uh Database database support. You can add uh, authentication. It's a chat app. You can do a million things to it. So yeah, that was my tutorial on this. If you wish to do uh, more, or if you wish for more tutorials, leave a thumbs up. And uh, that was it for today.